Hey wood turners, welcome to my shop. Today we're going to turn a four-legged stool. Uh, if you've already, uh, you may have already seen my earlier video on a three-legged stool. We're going to kick it up a notch. This one's a little more complex because of the risers, or rather the uh, stretchers or, or rungs. Uh, most, you know, every little every every little child needs a little stool uh, when they're getting ready to walk. They'll start climbing on it. Uh, and then when they get a little older, they'll sit on it. When they get even older, they'll, they'll treasure it as, as an heirloom. Uh, here's a picture of my uh, granddaughter, uh, Pepper. Uh, she appeared in an earlier video. Scott Foster uh, called her uh, my shop fairy. She got a big kick out of that. Uh, check out Scott's wood turning site on ads, uh, wood, woodcraft, wood turning. So, most any kind of wood. This one actually got made out of some uh, red oak from a down tree. It was cut green. I cut it into blocks, uh, sized it approximately, and put it in my garage and dried for a year. For the, for the top, I actually cut it into two pieces because I was afraid it was going to split, knowing that I, would, I could join them together, uh, which I did. It's got a glue line uh, for this, this top. So about two inches, two inches thick, maybe one and five, or one, one and a half inches. Uh, I prefer a little bit thicker. Uh, our project today, we're going to use uh, some spalted wood uh, that I've had in my shop for uh, was given to me, but it's several years been drying for several years, so it'll do real well. And it's spalted, so it ought to look nice. Um, someone gave me a rough uh, a rough four by four uh, timber, and they said it was cherry timber, and they said it was cherry. And when I when I cut it up today, I was surprised to find out it was actually walnut. So contrasting woods make a very nice uh, pattern. The legs are made out of uh, roughly the same size stock, about two inches thick, and in this case about ten and a quarter inches long. Um, uh, the seats, nine to twelve inches uh, wide. Uh, the legs, you're going to make them somewhere around uh, ten to twelve inches uh, tall. Uh, stretchers, we're going to make, we're going to have four stretchers, and they're made out of uh, one by, uh, and they're about, uh, oh, about seven and three quarters. We may have to trim them down to, as we get ready to measure those, uh, measure those later. So we're going to mount this block on the lathe. This side's been band sawed and it's fairly flat. This side's pretty rough uh, chain sawed. I'm going to turn it between centers in order to put a recess. This is going to be the very top. Uh, the pith went through here, so I'm going to turn this away and make that the bottom. So first thing we're going to do is turn between centers, put a recess for the chuck, then we're going to reverse it. So let's get started with that. And because the tailstock is in the way, I'm going to use a large chuck with a, a good size recess to make it a little easier to to get in there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark approximately minim minimum size. And that's the recess we're going to turn. I've got an old skew that I've put at about a 10 degree angle that I can go in here and uh, dish this out a little bit. We're only going to we're only going to go down about three-eighths of an inch. Make sure the speed is turned down very low. I'm turning below 800. on, turn it around. This is a Technotool uh, Titan chuck with power grip jaws, which are pretty strong jaws. And they've got a slight dovetail. That should hold is very tight. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use our tailstock support as long as possible. I'm going to go ahead and 
face off the bottom and see what we've got. So we'll do that with a swept back bowl gouge. Always turn your work, make sure it's not rubbing on the tool rest. too much further, kind of square it up a little bit, get rid of some of the outer, outer round. This tear out's going to look. I may put a little wood hardener on it and I think it'll be alright. This blank is actually pretty thick. It's uh, almost two and a half inches. So I've got, and I've got the pith sticking out right here. So we're going to get down below that pith as we try to face this thing off. Switch to a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Still got a little ways to go. Well, yeah, just a hair under two inches, so we're getting pretty close. Now I'm going to go ahead and take away the tail stock while we remove that and put the tenon, or uh, put the recess on rather. Now we could have used a wood worm screw. It's similar to the last three, the the last uh, three-legged stool we did. We used a screw chuck, but I'm going to go ahead and do a recess just to show you that as an optional way of chucking. Um, a chuck does make this a little faster and easier. Main thing you want to look for is a nice clean, clean shoulder there with just a little bit of a dovetail. And you can see from that angle that's the dovetail we're going to get. I want to clean this up just to smooth this out a little bit. We are getting a little, it's a little punkier than I would have liked, but uh, before we go to the drill press to drill those holes, we're going to scribe that line. I showed you scribing that line earlier, but we did that on the wrong side. So this is the bottom. So we're scribing a line an inch and a half from the outer edge, and we're going to mark that for, for drilling. Okay, uh, before we go to the drill press, let's talk about plans a little bit. It's always a good idea to draw full size, uh, full scale uh, plans uh, to help you get the angles and the details right. Uh, it can be kind of confusing on a, on a, a small uh, stool or even a, a larger stool. Now if you're turning one this size, go with 15 degrees 
and uh, 102 degrees or rather 78 degrees uh, on the inside and, and you'll be fine. But the reason it's different is when we go to drill these holes we've got a 75 degree angle going across from each other. But when we turn a little bit to do these cross stretchers that angle drops a little bit. It, actually it, it gets a little larger from 75 to 78 degrees. So uh, the tools you'll need for full size plans get you some paper. Uh, brown shop paper work, works well. Newsprint does well. Before I had that I went ahead and did this several years ago when I made the first stool and I just uh, taped some pieces of paper together. Uh, but that'll help. The other thing that in the tools you need for that of course is straight edge, uh, a compass and a, and a protractor. It's also a good idea to turn a prototype of your your leg and, and stretcher. Uh, it does two things. It'll give you a chance to refine your design and in addition it gives you a chance to practice your cuts and you can do that on, on a cheaper scrap. Uh, you can do, even do it on pine. Then make you a storyboard and we'll talk about that uh, more detail in my third video where we talk about duplicating legs. Um, Alan Leland who's done many many workshops on, on, uh, on stools uh, says for stools less than 24 inches you really don't need cross braces or, or these stretchers. I'm not sure I would go that, that far, but certainly they're overkill on this little stool, but it's something that I think adds, adds to the detail uh, and, and the fun of turning. Okay, now we're going to drill our holes. I'm going to use one inch holes. You could use three quarter inch, you could use seven eighths, depends on your design. The key thing is you mark uh, cross lines exactly across the middle, uh, 90 degrees from each other to help you line, line it up on your drill press. Now I made a little simple uh, jig uh, with a hinge. It's got some uh, one inch holes in it, could be five eighths, depends on the size of your dowel. With Use removable dowels and that helps, helps you uh, support your materials. It's got uh, removable wedges. These are 15 degree wedges to give me that 15 degree angle I said we need for my design. You slide them in. I got one on each side, and then you line up that line. Make sure that you're drilling at the top so you get the splay uh, cut in the right direction. And let's go ahead. And then I like to, uh, you know, I, I mark those punch lines on that inch and a half line we drew on the lathe. Uh, the punch holes make it a little easier to to line up the drill. So let's get started. Now, before we do it though, we better figure out how deep we're going to have to drill. So you're going to drill these holes about half the thickness of the wood or approximately an inch for a two inch block. So I'm going to set that and just kind of do a check and then I will make sure I've got my stop block. And then set the lock on your drill press. Uh, you know, an alternative that is putting on a piece of tape, but I want to be a little more precise on this. So, again, line it up, and then here we go. simply move it around, line it up, and do all four holes. Okay, now it's time to drill the holes. You can drill them on a drill press before you turn them, which I find preferable, or you can turn them later. If you turn them later, you can use this same jig, but with an additional V-block to hold the rounded, rounded part, with again with removable pegs that match these holes. Now, if you, your leg is too long to drill this way, of course, you just angle it uh, lengthways. Now, in this case where I have four braces and they are offset, it can get very confusing. I found the easiest way is to line all of the first side up, the high ones, and mark it at a uniform distance. 
how, what the distance is based on your design. Then when you turn them in, the inners, the inner sides, I mark those with a zero. Use whatever you want, but they, they go to the inside. And when I marked the hole, I found the simplest way to keep straight was to make a little template with a T hole and an O hole. So I use that, I line it up on a line drawn to, to, to punch it. And then when I turn it this way, I have the lower hole marked with an O. You'll find that it makes a little more sense when you try it. It can be very confusing. So the key thing is, is have a system. And then, in this case, I've got this clamp down. I also changed the V-blocks for 12 degrees because that's the, that is the right angle for these. I'll make sure. My, and again, we have to make sure that we've got the depth set. In this case, about half the distance of the wood, and line that horizontal, that uh, vertical line, line it up with the line marked on your jig. said I uh, used a 5 8 inch bit you got to make sure you swap that bit out uh, because you're using one inch stock for these uh, cross braces now if you want some more specific instructions on making this jig you can find that in Keith Rowley's book wood turning a foundation course or you can do what we did in the three-legged stool and simply just uh, brace it with a sliding block and, until you get the measurement right and you know like I said before, mine is not the only way, it may not be the best way, but it's the way I do it. And you have to decide how many of these you're going to make to, before you want to go to the trouble of making a jig. Uh, but if you're going to make more than one, I think a jig does make it easier. Okay, we've got it mounted, uh, remounted. I've drawn a line on each side of the holes drilled because we're going to taper that to match the angle axial angle of the, the leg uh, and change that profile to this profile right here to match it and then we'll figure out how we want to round it over. So let's go ahead and take care of that first. scraper to try to flush that out just a little bit. And I think I'm going to use a pretty heavy uh, bedan type scraper. Bring it across. that I'm not getting any tear out that's looking looking good I've got a pretty clean shoulder in there um, 
it's I think that angle uh, is a close approximation of, of that shape close enough now I'm going to go ahead and start rounding this over and profile that a little bit Get this very blunt grind bowl gouge. Just a little bit. And now I've got a sharp edge here. I think I'm going to round over this edge right here. And then I'm going to put a couple of beads here just to kind of disguise this. Maybe a couple of beads in the bottom to disguise that recess. I think I'm going to mark those beads with this uh, pyramid tool and then cut them with a uh, detail gouge. I'm thinking maybe one, one bead will be enough. Take a detail gouge and shape it just a little bit. detail there. Okay, we're going to reverse chuck this and profile the top and along the edge here and then dish it. Alright, make sure we're well seated. Turn it snug, but not so hard that it just starts distorting this, this grain. Okay, I think I want to work on the profile first on the outside, and then we'll worry about dishing it. So, like a bowl, since this is side grain, uh, or face grain rather, we're going to, I'm going to start picking it up from probably right about here. And start that curve and then we'll start dishing it out from somewhere probably along here okay let's get started scrape this edge or it's going to tear out so I've got to cut it um, although I'm kind of liking that shape I may leave that I don't know a little small 3 8 inch bowl gouge Dish it out a 
about a half an inch. Give it a nice shape. So the best way to tell how deep is go ahead and <coughs> cut down here and then clean out the metal. I think I like the dishing and now all I gotta do is kind of uh, smooth it up some. And I think for that I'm gonna use a, a very blunt grind old gouge, probably about a 75 degree grind. I dare not scrape this with this uh, spalting or I'm afraid it'll just, just uh, pick and rip. Okay, we finished uh, Sanding this off off the lathe uh, using my um, rotary Harbor Freight uh, rotary sand, rotary sander. Uh, I'm real happy with the way it's looking. You can see the little detail uh, I put on here. I softened the edges by hand. Uh, only sanded up to 220, uh, which is which is going to be good. I did put a little uh, Minwax wood hardener on it. There are some punky spots, um, you know, that are kind of rough, and they'll, they'll never get much smoother than that. So. Uh, but I think overall I'm happy with it. You can contrast the difference between the way we chucked it with a recess with the little button we used uh, in the last project where we used a uh, wood worm, a, a screw, screw chuck. Uh, but I'm liking this a lot. Okay, we were getting ready to turn the four uh, spindles. I've drilled all the holes. I have gone ahead and marked centers on both ends. Uh, part of that was part of the alignment process to make sure I was drilling the holes on center using that little uh, uh, wood jig I showed you in, in the video. Uh, I'd, I went ahead and turned a couple of prototypes. Uh, turns out uh, I like this one the best, which is closest to the, the original four-legged uh, four uh, stool. The difference is because I, in th this design I've offset these uh, braces or or rungs, I had to change the design just just a little bit. Uh, so it's a good thing I did turn a, a prototype. I've put it here on the on my Pyromatic comparator so I can leave it in the line of sight. And as I mark the features on the roughed out blank, I can just I can observe the curve and pretty much I think catch those curves pretty much by eye as long as I have these features marked in the right right place. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn rough this and turn it round. I'm setting my my calipers using my little caliper gauge on one and three quarter inches, so I can make sure I, I can stop. And I'm going to go ahead and rough turn all of these at one time, and then do the layup, uh, the marking for all of them at one time. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later about how. You do this in steps, and if you do the same step and then switch out spindles, you'll get far better results. So let's get started.
got a nail in this one. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Just noticed that. Wow. Um, okay, I'm going to have to think about where that is in the design. And I'll probably just drive it in and cover it with a little bit of uh, wood putty or, or not worry about it. And it's going to be in, in the thicker part of my design. So I'm just going to drive it in with a nail punch. There's, that's interesting. And because all this stock is about the same, once I get it rounded, I don't need to caliper it because it's going to be what it is when it's round. Be right back. Okay, I want to report back on that little shiny... Uh, thing I thought was a nail. Uh, it turns out it was lead. Um, I couldn't find it on the other stock that was opposing it when I cut it, so the only conclusion I can draw is somebody was out shooting with a shotgun and hit this tree many, many years ago before it got big and it got completely enveloped because it was very, very soft and I, and I, when I punched it in there and, and used an awl to pull at it. So you never know what you're going to get. So once I rough it, before I put these away to mark up, I'd like to go through and just do a planing cut with this skew. Get as nice and smooth a cut as I can off the tool. Anchor, bevel, and then cut. As long as you cut in the lower third, you know, a skew is not really as bad as people make it out to be, and it does make a beautiful planing cut. Like I say, cut in the lower third. Okay, that's the last of the four rounding. Now it's time for to start laying it out. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to part this down uh, first right here where it's marked to fit the, uh, the hole uh, on the bottom of the stool. And then I'm going to do each one of them as I size it. Okay. Now you can safely hold this in your left hand. It, the ends are rounded over. And we're just going to start on the very end, so if I undersize it a little bit, it won't be too much of a problem. And this only rough size it. This will actually make the tenon slightly oversized. So it just gets as close to where we want to be. Looks like we missed the mark a little bit. We're going to have to be real careful on the next one. Uh, if, uh, if this is too sloppy in the tool, in the stool, there is a way to solve that problem. We simply take our handsaw. I did, can you believe I did this deliberately for this teaching point? You take a handsaw and you cut down to here and you put a very thin wedge in it. So when you hammer it in, it'll, it'll wedge on there and that'll solve that problem. Okay, here's how we fix that, that problem, uh, that teaching moment. You don't think I really did that on purpose, do you? The first thing we do is we cut a slot uh, for a wedge in the end of the, the tenon. And then we, we add the, the uh, wedge as shown here. And then when we glue it and hammer it in, it'll work just fine. Just make sure you do the dry dry fit without the wedge because once that wedge goes in there it's not coming out. Now let's look at how we measure for cross uh, the cross braces or, or the rungs. Uh, certainly using two pieces of all thread as a, a tip Nick Cook uh, suggests and it works fine on larger larger stools. I didn't want to bother to cut this all thread um, but you know if you use a bolt you can get that bolt to exactly where you you want it and then you just you can take it out when you take it out you you measure that and there's distance or you can just simply use two dowels and in 
for simplicity, what I did was cut some uh, little skewers I use around the shop. You get a pack of these and they're handy for spreading glue and a lot of things. And then I just mark my finger here, bring it back together, bring the ruler over, and I find that I've got six and a half inches. Just remember, you get two different measurements on this tool. You've got this measurement and then the offset one that's a little bit lower is going to be a little bit longer. In my case, six and three quarter inches. So I turn two of these cross braces at six and a half and two of them at six and three quarters. Okay, we got all the parts turned together. We did a dry assembly uh, before we did the glue up. I used carpenter's glue. I used uh, Type Bond 3 just because it had a little more open time. Gave me time to, to get all these moving parts hammered in. Uh, drive, the, drive the legs home with a dead blow mallet. Make sure you got everything seated real well. Um, only thing left is for me to put a couple of co coats of uh, my favorite uh, Minwax Antique Oil finish on it. I've seen Kim uh, Winkle uh, wood turning artist uh, do, do some real nice tools decorated with milk paint so you might want to explore that. So I hope this has been a good project for you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, I know it was a fun project for me. Uh, maybe you'll get motivated to turn turn a stool like this or maybe a, a big uh, three-legged three -legged stop shop stool. In the, the next series of this three-part series, the final one is going to be one where I'm going to talk more about the actual spindle turning of the legs and focusing in on, on duplicating. Uh, there's concepts dealing with duplicating that don't apply just to uh, stools, but it could be le legs for a, a table or, or, or balusters. And you certainly don't need a replicator, so I hope you'll stay tuned for that video and that just the location for that will be on my the description for this, this video. Thanks.